Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Ms. Stover again. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about chemical quantities um, and using the mole. So we've learned how to calculate using the mole and how to calculate from moles to grams and grams to moles. And we've even explored a little bit about this moles to liters kind of concept for gases. Um, now we're going to be looking at how can we use those in practical ways. Okay. So today's conversation is going to start by talking about percent composition. So most of you have seen something like this lawn fertilizer with numbers on the side of the bag like 33-4. But what you don't really know is that those numbers represent the percent of that particular element um, that is needed for fertilizer. Normally nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in certain forms. So those numbers on the sides of the bags um, actually represent the percentages. So in this case 30% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, and 4% potassium. So, I think I can truly say that we that in this book we have all of the elements of a first class thriller and you can see the composition of things going on. Just a little um, funny to kind of get us through uh, the next portion here. Okay. So, percent composition. It's pretty simple. Percent composition basically means it's the percent by mass of each element in the formula. When we say by mass, what we mean is that we need the mass of each of the elements and the mass of the entire compound. With those masses, we can then begin to find percent composition. So there are two methods of doing this. One, we're going to use the formula, and we're going to use the molar mass idea to get all of this information that we need. The mass of each element and the total mass, the total molar mass. Or we can use experimental data where we measure the mass of the elements or measured something to get the mass of the elements. So you have to remember a couple of things about percentages. So percentages are really interesting because percentages are always the part divided by the whole. Um, if I tell you you ate two slices of pizza, the large pizza, you know you ate two eighths of the pizza or one quarter. That is equal to 25% of the pizza. Okay, it's the same concept. This time we're going to take the part that is the element, the mass of that element, dividing it by the whole entire mass for the compound. So. This is going to be the same thing all the time. Every time we do anything that has percents, it's always going to be parts divided by wholes. So it's always really good to remember that those kinds of things are always the same. Okay? So let's look at a, a problem. Calculating a percent composition. So this is calculating from a formula. We see the formula MgCO3. So the first thing that we need to do is to find the molar mass of magnesium carbonate, which is MgCO3. You can see that we have the mass of magnesium here. We have the mass of one carbon. And now we've got three oxygens because of that. So we get a total mass of 84.32. So we can see all but oxygen, we know the total. So there are 24.31 masses of uh, grams of magnesium, 12.01 grams of carbon in that compound, and 48, 3 times 16 is 48 grams of oxygen. So remember, we're going to do the part that is the compound divided by the whole. So if we're looking at magnesium first, we're going to do 24.31 divided by 84.32, and we're going to get 28.83%. Okay? For carbon, same thing, except this time we're going to use carbon's numbers. Carbon is 12.01 uh, divided by 84.32 times 100 is equal to 14.24%. And then, of course, oxygen, well, the total mass of oxygen is 48 grams divided by 84.32 times 100. Yep, that's it, 56.93. Now, the really clue here, this really key, is that these can't add up to more than 100. So if we add 28.83, 14.28 and 56.93, we get exactly 100%. Now, if it's a little over, like let's say 100.02% or 99.98%, that's pretty close to, to 100, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. But if we're talking 102, 103%, or 97%, that's not close enough. 
Um, also, I want you to express all of your percentages with two decimal places. Because there's no really significance in these problems because we're not given any numbers, we're taking numbers from the periodic table, significant figures are hard to determine. So we're going to keep two places beyond the decimal point for all percent compositions. So two places beyond the decimal point for all percent compositions, okay? So here we go. Learning check. What is the percent composition of lactic acid C3H6O3, a compound that appears in the blood after vigorous activity? So after you exercise, you actually get lactic acid that builds up in your bloodstream. So what are we going to do? Well, let's see. First, step one. We have to find the mass of everything. So we have three carbons, 12.01, six hydrogens at 1.01, three oxygens at 16. And if we add all that up and multiply all that together, that gives us 80.08. .08. Well, separately, what are they? Well, carbon is going to be 36.03, three times 12. Um, hydrogen is going to be 6.06. .06, and oxygen is going to be 48.08. .08. And I guess that would be at 90.09, .09, but... Um, it's here, nor there, right at the moment. Okay, that's 0 0.01. We're going to be okay. Didn't correct that mistake. Sorry. Step two. Okay, now we take each part and divide it by the whole. The whole is 90.08. .08. Each part, well, carbon is 36.03. .03. Hydrogen is 6.06. .06. Oxygen is 48.00. .00. So that's what we do. Carbon, 36.03 .03, um, divided by 90.08 .08 times 100 gives us 40% carbon. Oct hydrogen. 6.06 .06 .06 divided by 90.08 .08 times 100 gives us 6.73% hydrogen. Oxygen, 48.00 .00 divided by 90.08 .08 times 100 is equal to 53.29%. So if we were to add those up, we can see we're going to get like 100.01 it looks like. Um, 3 and 9 are 12, actually 100.02. So we're, we're really close to what we're supposed to be getting there. So that's a, an acceptable solution. Okay? Now, another learning check. The chemical isoamyl acetate, C7H14O2. Isoamyl acetate is the organic name for this substance. We didn't learn how to do that, and that's okay. Don't panic that you don't understand that name. It's quite all right because you are not going to learn that in this class. Okay, it gives the odor of pears. What is the percent of carbon in isoamyl acetate? It wants to know if it's 7.102%, 35.51%, 64.58%. Very simply, formula is what we know. So, find the molar mass of C7H14O2. Here we go. 7 carbons at 12.01, 14 hydrogens at 1.01. .01. It says 1.008. That's the way it was calculated at the moment. 2 oxygens at 16. And we get 130.18, give or take, because of the 1.008. So carbon is um, 7 carbons times 12. That's 84.07. So all we're worried about is carbon. We don't care about anything else. So here we go. Carbon, the mass of carbon divided by the molar mass times 100. That's what we're going to be doing. So here we are, 84.07 divided by 30.18 times 100. And that gives us 64.58% C. So the answer choice that was correct in the last problem was number three. Um, it was the 64.58%. Okay? So from the formula, it's pretty simple because we just used the molar mass. Same thing that we've been doing already. Now we're going to complicate it just a bit. So how do we calculate the percent composition from experimental data? In actuality, it's exactly the same process. There's one difference. We don't know the formula. So we don't have that information. So whatever information we're given, we're going to assume it's complete, okay? So here's a problem. Find the percent composition of a compound made from 3.83 grams of magnesium and 2.52 grams of oxygen. So we can see the mass of each of these things. We can see the mass of each of these substances. There's the 3.83, there's the 2.52. So now we have the mass of each of them separately. What is the mass together? Well, 3.83 and 2.52 added together. That's 5. 8 and 5, that's 13. Carry the 1, 5, 6. So it's 6.35 grams altogether. So it's the same process, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take the part that is magnesium, divided it by the whole. The part that is oxygen, divided by the whole. Multiply each of those by 100. So here we go, magnesium. 3.83 divided by 6.35 times 100 gives us 60.30%. Oxygen, 
2.52 divided by 6.35 times 100 gives you 39.7%. In actuality, using experimental data is easier because you're given more of the information, okay? You're given more of the information. So let's check and see, and oh look, it's 100%. Um, so we did really good there. All right, so let's see if we have a, a learning check here. A compound was analyzed and found to contain 0.89 grams of potassium, 1.18 grams of chromium, and 1.27 grams of oxygen. What is the percent composition of the compound? These are the two compounds that they could be. Um, the yellow on the top and the orange on the bottom. It's one of those two compounds. Um, we're going to get that a little bit more, more down the road in how to understand which one that is. Um, but I'm telling you, it's either the yellow one or it is the orange one. So how do we go about doing this? Very simple. We know the mass of each element. So the first step is to find the mass of the compound. So what we're going to do, we've got 0.89 grams of potassium, 1.18 grams of chromium, and 1.27 grams of oxygen for a total mass of 3.34 grams. Step two, we're going to find the percent of each element. So the percent of uh, potassium is going to be 0.89 divided by 3.34 times 100, which is going to give us 26.65% potassium. Percent chromium is going to be 1.18 divided by 3.34 times 100, and that's going to give us 35.33% chromium. Oxygen, 1.27 divided by 3.34 times 100, is going to give us 38.02% oxygen. And in actuality, I know something you don't, and we're going we're gonna to wrap this up a little bit later. But right now, you just have to focus on percent composition. But I happen to know that it is the orange compound. And you're going to help me later figure out how we know it's the orange compound. So that is the um, video for tonight. Please make sure you've watched it for Monday, and um, we'll have a, a conversation and some work to do on Monday and then a lab on Tuesday. All right, thank you.